I'll do a drug test, an alcohol test right now. As what? And I put a motion for that every counselor do it too. You know what? They jumped up. They don't want anything to do with it. And then when our last council meeting, everyone says, oh, we're going out drinking we're after. Put that so. back on the next meeting? Yes, absolutely. I don't want to do this. I'm not a rat, Joe. You know what? I know people party on the side. I know lawyers, doctors, who, everybody who has a good council, time. Uh, you know who's done it. Anybody else? I'm not going to name names. No, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not. Why not? Your name is out there. Because, no, but let them vote Joe. on it and see who comes forward and who doesn't. Sure. Well, safe to say that when Mayor Rob Ford opens his mouth, you have absolutely no idea what's going to come out. So give the guy a TV show. It'll be great. Great reality show. Some say, however, we shouldn't be doing this at all. Some say it's genius. In fact, one of our toughest critics, I might say, uh, had that to say. Mr. John Doyle, I'm very, very happy to have you in. Thank you from the Globe and Mail, of course. Pleasure uh, to be here. Matt Gurney from the National Post, who has the opposite view. But I want to start with you, Mr. Doyle because you have been a tough critic of Sun News. So when I reached out to you on Friday, I half jokingly said, well, let's get our toughest critic who probably won't come on the show and certainly won't like Ford Nation, but I apparently was wrong. For I am not your toughest critic. No, you are I'm, a very tough I'm, critic. I'm, I like, I might be a tough writer, a tough columnist sometimes, but I like Sun News. I've, I've never campaigned for it going off the air or anything like that. I like this channel. Good, so, I, well, that's, so, that's nice to hear. I, it is, I think, inevitable that Rob Ford and his brother end up on on uh, on this channel. It makes perfect sense to me. Okay, so you've written that they are kind of like the Bob and Doug McKenzie, just not the lovable Bob and Doug McKenzie. Yes, I have. I mean, uh, that was a column in which I suggested that there's a kind of super hoser aspect. I think that the term power hoser mm -hmm. uh, has been you, which I should trademark, I think, actually. Yeah, and uh, now I'm making the mistake of calling <laughs> Rob Bob now because of your <laughs> columns. Well, um, that, but that, that, that column was really about uh, how I think uh, the Fords and others have taken an aspect of, of icons of the oh, popular good. Canadian culture, that is the hoser, mm -hmm. immortalized by, by Bob and Doug McKenzie, taken aspects of that, the sort of, the sort of boorishness, yeah. the lovable chump aspect of that, and they have exaggerated that. They have used aspects of that to sell themselves as being regular guys, whereas in fact they are not. They're crass, crude, rich, they're right wing, they're deeply conservative. And people want to watch them, but you yourself don't think that, it, that they should have a show. Well, it's, look, it's up to the, the Sun business team and the guys who run the place to decide what they put on air. I just easily see ways in which this could backfire. I understand the appeal of it. I mean, first of all, the appeal of the public getting to watch it. I mean, it's all over every cable news uh, channel in Canada and the U.S. Mm -hmm. People are really interested in this. But then I kind of think to myself, you know, if, if I were making the decision, and look, I'm a newspaper guy, so I'm not, but if I was, there would be way too much risk for me to do this. Now, I mean, it's obviously uh, we know the the Fords had recorded the show. It'll air tonight, so that gives some freedom here. But it just yeah, struck this me this is live. Yeah, <laughs> that this is, not. is Yeah, but uh, at News Talk 1010, which yeah. did live radio, just had just decided recently. Uh, you know, this is getting a little too insane. So maybe we should cut these guys loose. I think they did that for a reason. I mean, News Talk 1010 would like ratings as much as the next guy. Mm -hmm. The Fords are kind of going rogue a bit, and I think uh, as, as we did joked off the air. It, you never, like literally, you do never know what's going to come out of their mouth. That can be a very risky thing. There's some protection built into the fact that it's being pre taped here. But, you know, I think honestly, I mean, once upon a time, we in the media could have said it's very important that we give a channel to mm -hmm. public figures to address the public, to reach out and to say, you know, this is what I think, and hopefully to do it candidly and not to, not just be all scripted and soundbite ish. I'm not sure that's the case anymore. Right now, if uh, Rob Ford were to go out and actually take over the Twitter account he actually has yeah. and start tweeting uh, in real time, it would be retweeted tweeted across every corner of the earth instantly. I mean, there's no need for the media to be an intermediate step anymore. I understand why people are going to be interested. I'll watch it myself, but it Well, they just have to be me. interested because well, yeah. all the American media is here. Over. I mean, everyone's yeah. talking about I, it. I, I think, you know, with all due respect to Matt, I think that's way too pious about, yeah. uh, about television. Uh, I, I think that, uh, as I said in, in my column in the Globe and Mail today, uh, Analysis is beggared by events, but in, by the Rob Ford events, mm -hmm. Doug Ford events, as they unfold. Irony is beggared by it. This is something that has essentially unfolded on television. Right. Of the many things that Rob Ford is accused of, I think one that is a dead certain is that he's addicted to television, especially live television. Television has undone him. It has ruined the Fords, and I think it will destroy them. That is what's happening now. There's inevit an inevitability about what's playing out here. 
you know, as Moses Neimer used to say, television is flow, not show. Let this flow. This is the inevitable end. This is the only thing that can happen in this circumstance. Let them on television. Let them destroy themselves. Because I was surprised by our viewers, many of whom are part of this Ford nation. Um, a lot of them were angered. Why are you doing this? Don't do this to them. This is unfair. And yet a whole other side are saying, absolutely, you cannot stop the story. Um, I don't know too many news. Well, the, the reaction you're talking about, I think, is that, you know, there's somehow it's embarrassing to put uh, Rob Ford on television at this point because he may well do something embarrassing and there's a kind of cringe factor to it. I think if you look, if you stand back and look at this, and I have to say, you know, I'm the television critic, I'm not a political pundit, mm -hmm. but the Fords are blind to embarrassment. Yeah. They are blind to shame. So that issue of the cringe factor doesn't come into it. So are they rewriting the rules, in your view, as to how politics is going to play out? Because they're not to, polite. To extent, they don't talk in sound bites. They, are, they just they, <laughs> to some extent they are. This is possibly the future. I mean, they're not the first figures with this kind of fake authenticity to use television to sort of go above the heads of media pundits and speak directly to to the public. Mm -hmm. Sarah Palin was very much a figure like that, who was uh, who was good on television, and then I think in the end, television destroyed her, revealed her to be to be as crass and dumb. Uh, as she actually is. And that's what's happening here. It is television at its at its best, and television. Although what, she's what used. Television does does for us yeah. as a public is deliver the real picture, the real authenticity of the Fords. But P Palin turned to TV after her political career had peaked, and you know we can't rule her out because she always uh, muses about the idea of coming back. But the Fords are doing this while in the midst of their political crisis, and that is what I think is different here. And it's going to be different and from, as you said. I mean, there's going to be people probably who might be Ford supporters saying, "Oh, don't put them on the air; it'll only make it worse." There's also going to be Ford supporters who are going to say, "Put him on the air; let him have his say." I mean, you're going to have a real split of opinions here on both sides. Ford supporters or critics, both groups are going to want him on the air or off the air for entirely different reasons. So I'm not surprised you're hearing from even your regular viewers here, because even if they are members of Ford Nation, it just you know split it down the middle. Say half of them are going to be horrified, half of them are going to be excited, <laughs> and half of them, or actually yeah. all of them, will hopefully come back next and Monday watch. to watch yeah, exactly. the next episode. Yeah. So let's just quickly oh, take there, a there will not be a next episode. Well, we don't I, know I that. Put, that we don't know. I would put money on that. I would say there is zero chance there is going to be a repeat of this. I think uh, a bit, doing an entire show with the Fords, yeah. my, sus my suspicion, and I speak here as a television critic for the national newspaper, uh, they, they may appear occasionally on Sun News after this in like a 10 minute, 15 minute segment, but I suspect this show is one time only. Well, they are writing all the rules. Let's just take a quick break. We'll come back uh, with more on should Ford Nation uh, exist. All right, I'm joined by Matt Gurney of the National Post, John Doyle of the Globe and Mail. We're having this conversation about whether or not Ford Nation should exist. Are we taking advantage of the guy? Because I love it when guys like Dr. Drew say, he's very vulnerable, we must not take advantage. But we all darn well know that if Drew Pinsky had a chance to get him on and cure him on live TV, he would. He doesn't want to be cured. <laughs> uh, you know, for want of a, of a better phrase, I think one of the things that has emerged is that Rob Ford is a fame whore. He likes to be famous. That is why there are all of these engagements with live television. There is that. There is an, an extraordinary adolescent ego there about being a celebrity, about being famous. That, that's a big part of the dynamic with Rob Ford. I don't know if you can take advantage of someone who's so eager to be exploited. I mean, I think maybe if 10, 15 years from now, if he gets clean and uh, hopefully his life is on a more stable ground, he might look back and say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But right now he's putting himself out there. If it wasn't here, he would find some place to go. So I understand the impulse of just saying, so long as he's going to do this, he might as well be on our airwaves instead of someone else. But we're seeing a groundswell now of uh, comments uh, on social media, and I'll bring Gina in to weigh on it, of, of people now who are past the anger of this guy and past the disappointment. Now he's becoming like this cult hero. He's on Saturday Night Live. He goes to the football game. He's not running from this. Yeah. No, so no people he's, he's embracing him. it. And he's like the honey boo-boo of the, the, the political the, the world. The question is, 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 he, is he genuinely a hero uh, to these people? Is he, and also I think it's important to ask, is he no longer a hero to media, to right-wing media, to, to, to efforts like, like this channel? 
And I think, you know, it has Like, in other words, does he it, bring the cuckoo to the conservative brand? You know, if you, if, you, if you look back, the crassness and crudeness of Rob Ford yeah. as a person and politician was obvious a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, be, even before he was elected mayor, but after he was elected mayor, when he refused to go to the Pride Parade events and ostentatiously made a point of leaving town, when he and his brother sneered at Margaret Atwood and talked about closing libraries and who would care about that, the essential crassness of the man was, was obvious there. And I think now, I think some media, including this channel, should look back and mm -hmm. reconsider the praise they gave to someone like Rob Ford when he did that. Because at the time, that was presented as, as a voice of authenticity. Well, like I don't recall there being, being honesty. there were not a lot of great choices in the last municipal election. You had George Smitherman, who had been involved in a number of kind of scandalous uh, issues at Queen's Park. You couldn't vote for that guy. Or Rob Ford. The choices weren't great. But if you wanted to talk about fiscal restraint, he was your guy. And he really was turning things around as far as and not I don't spending think money. anyone was blind to that. I, I wasn't mean, voting for his moral compass. No, or his exactly. Nice suits. And I mean, and John, I mean, you're saying his his crassness has become apparent. I think it was always quite apparent. It's become magnified, perhaps, because <laughs> the attention on him is more. Well, the gravy train is now turned into the it, crazy. Yeah, train. I mean, and it's, it's parking right at his office. Yeah, it's the last stop on the train. So I think yeah, a lot of people knew what they were getting into. I mean, probably they didn't know it was going to be this bad, but they at least knew that this was a guy who was colorful, who was crass, mm -hmm. who uh, basically there were a lot of people out there who said, yeah, okay, he's imperfect, but I'm not looking for perfect. I want someone who will keep taxes low. And that's probably why his support is still stubbornly, I would say, amazingly high. Let but me ask it, you, yes. sorry, uh, Sarah Palin was eviscerated in, in the mainstream media, so to speak. She was really, really hounded because she said things that made it easy to hound her. Yet she has used the media to now turn herself into this She's a huge uh, force to be reckoned with in the United States. She makes millions of dollars. Can he not use the media now, and especially TV in this reality world we live in, to rebuild himself? Everyone loves a hero. First of all, or, sorry, I, a comeback story. I, th I think Sarah Palin's uh, appeal is very niche now. Mm -hmm. She cannot go beyond that niche appeal into uh, national office in the U.S. And what happened with Sarah Palin was that television, which made her, also destroyed her. Sarah Palin was presented as a, a variation on this sort of Rob Ford type of, of authentic, mm -hmm. honest, for the little guy. She was presented as a, as a hockey mom, which, of course, she wasn't. She presented herself as, as an ordinary mother, a, a penny, someone who had to pinch pennies, who had to take care of the kids, all of that. She went through all of that, and then her ego allowed her to be the subject of a reality TV series, Sarah mm -hmm. Palin's Alaska. And that revealed the truth about Sarah Palin. And with viewers got to see that actually she was very rich. You and when, she when, was. when Sarah Palin and her family went fishing, they took a private plane to do it. When they went hiking, there was this enormous expensive coach, not a van, not a minivan, but this enormous coach that took them somewhere. That said money. It's it's it spoke to the distance between her and what she presented herself to be. So I think, you know, citing Sarah Palin is probably the wrong example. And I don't think what, whatever cunning Sarah Palin might have might have had, Rob Ford has none of it. Last word, Matt. I just don't know if Canada would be a big enough place for someone like Rob Ford to make a new life based on this. I mean, I agree that Palin's uh, place in society now is niche, but it's a big niche. She can go to book signings in every state of the union the rest of her life. She'll make good money off of that. I don't think Canada could sustain someone like Ford indefinitely. Well, so. I don't get the sense. I, I, if I'm a betting gal, I would think that there are a few American companies that are ap openly and, and trying to get him as a reality show. I yeah. think that they are definitely pursuing him, whether or not he goes down that road is anyone's guess, but I would have to think that he could make a very good living rebuilding his life in front but of the camera. But he is a creature of that world to begin with, in all his crafts. Albeit he's very private with his family. You don't yeah. see the cameras ever go into his home life. He is very fiercely protective of his children and his wife, uh, which is ironic because he's so vocally, uh, he's kind of such a train wreck in, in real life. Yeah and often in front of the public. You know, I think probably people have always been supportive of him when he stands up and says, no, you know, don't, don't take photos of my kids or yeah. don't put cameras outside my house. But then he goes out and drags his wife through a press conference. <laughs> so it's, yeah. uh, it can be contradictory, but I agree with you. I think people will res probably respect that about him more than anything else at this point. It's one of the last few things he has left. And they may, well, respect, him they yeah. may respect him a lot less after his show on Sun News tonight. Yeah.
We'll see. We'll read about it tomorrow, guys. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I really do appreciate it. Thank Let's uh, go over to Gina Phillips, who mm -hmm. I know you're watching the social media aspect of this because it's all I certainly up. am. I hope people are watching this debate right now. It's it's really interesting. We uh, couldn't avoid it because we got so totally. we got inundated with people talking about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, and it's not one of those things where we post about it, you know, we're, we're celebrating a new show, and all of our viewers are, yay, yay, yay. I mean, th in this case, they're pretty split. I'll show you uh, the reaction to our uh, web poll. Will you be watching Ford Nation tonight on Sun News Network? 59% of people saying yes, 41% saying no. So, I mean, a lot of people are kind of shaking their heads at this one. Uh, they think the, the majority of people who aren't going to watch say that we are exploiting someone who might need help, and that is kind of the problem. But as you guys stated, I mean, can you really exploit someone who, as John said, is a fame whore? <laughs> but that was uh, pretty funny. Uh, I, I think either way, the haters will still watch and uh, even if they're not watching tonight on our channel, they will be inundated with it tomorrow on the other media outlets anyway. So I think most people will end up seeing what goes on tonight. Good stuff. Gina, thank you. Yeah. All right, thank Matt you. Matt Gurney of the National Post, John Doyle of the Globe and Mail, I appreciate you both coming in thank you. on this one. Right. We are taking a quick break here. You're watching Straight Talk on Sun News Network. We'll be back after this to wrap it up.